Hey there! I'm here today to talk to, to you about my most favorite book of all time. I get asked this question a lot. Miss Paige, what's your favorite book to read ever, ever? My students ask this all the time and I tell them the same thing every time and they still ask it again. So I'm here to answer that question and I hope that I can shed a little light on one of the greatest books ever, which is Persuasion by Jane Austen. Okay, this is one of the uh, couple of copies that I have of this book, and I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, I was given this copy by a college roommate of mine, and I had read the book before, but I didn't come to truly love it until maybe um, the second or third time that I read the book. And I can't even tell you how many times I've read it now. But I want to, want to tell you a little bit about the story of this book and then get into why I like it so much. So we have Anne Elliot. Anne is our main character, and she's actually Austin's oldest main character. She's in her late 20s when um, sh when this story starts. And one of the things that's cool about Anne, sorry, I'm trying to fidget and adjust things here. Okay. One of the things that's cool about Anne is that she really knows her heart. However, she's also really easily persuaded. And since the book is called Persuasion, we know that that's going to be a big part of the story. So when we start, we meet Anne, and she once fell for this guy, Captain Wentworth. All right, here's Captain Wentworth. Sorry, I really can't do this backwards. Okay. So he wasn't a captain at this time. He was just a sailor, and he didn't have very much money. And they fell for each other, but... Then we have Anne's well-meaning but kind of bossy. Gosh, I can't even see if that's in the picture. Okay, Lady Russell. Now, Lady Russell um, is Anne's mother's age or somewhere thereabouts, and she tried to help tries to help Anne because Anne's mother has passed away many years ago. And so Lady Russell convinces her, you know, this Wentworth guy, he doesn't amount to much. He's just a sailor. You should not marry him. So she's kind of sticking her nose into Anne and Wentworth's business. So they, um, she says no to his proposal and he goes bye-bye. Fast forward to when our story begins. Um, Anne's father, um, the elder Mr. Elliot, he's kind of running out of money and so he and his little daughter Elizabeth is, are going to go to Bath where it's cheaper to live and he can still run in the first circles and that kind of thing in society but not have to have as much money. Anne, however, is being sent to stay with her other sister, Mary. Mary's a hoot. I kind of wonder um, if Jane Austen kind of had uh, something, some kind of, I don't want to say grudge, but some little joke to herself about people named Mary because in Pride and Prejudice, the sister named Mary is kind of a stick in the mud. And in this book, Mary, she's always complaining and... Ugh, Nobody knows how sick I am. Nobody comes and asks me over for dinner. And why don't they come and see me? It's She's very, very self-involved. And she has kids, but she doesn't have a very strong ma maternal instinct. And so Anne, as the aunt, aunt, actually cares for the kids on a more personal level than their own mother does, which is kind of sad. So Anne goes to see her sister Mary. Now, her sister Mary just happens to be married to Charles Musgrove. Charles Musgrove originally wanted to marry Anne, but he was also turned down because Lady Russell again stuck her nose in and persuaded Anne to say no. So Charles married her little sister Mary instead. And sometimes we get the idea that Charles wasn't very happy about the situation. Um, while Anne is visiting Sister Mary and brother-in-law Charles. Guess who shows up? Captain Frederick Wentworth, the guy she was in love with all those years ago. Only he's not in love with her anymore, and she is very scared. She's like, oh, crap. Is he even going to know me? Is he? Does he hate me? What's going on? And he's kind of cold to her. He actually starts flirting with it. another girl. Charles has two sisters, Henrietta and Louisa. And Captain Wentworth starts flir flirting with Louisa, who's a very sweet girl and no grudges against her whatsoever. She doesn't know the history between these two. Hardly anyone does. Um, so Louisa 
flirts back with the captain and and a lot of people think that the captain's flirting with Louisa to make Anne jealous. It depends on how you read the book. I think sometimes I think he is and sometimes I think he's just kind of she she said no to me all those years ago. Why am I going to try? So, I still go back and forth as to what is in his mind. Now, the gr whole group decides to go to Lyme to see a friend of Captain Wentworth's. They're going to meet him and see Lyme, which is kind of like the beach. And, you know, they're right on the ocean. And there's this um, place where people go walking in Lyme. And Louisa, um, she's walking along on the edge. Okay, put Anne down for a second. Louisa's walking along, and there's this very steep stairway. And instead of walking down the stairs like a sensible person, she insists on being jumped down, meaning that she would jump and one of the men would catch her. And so she was jumping and Captain Wentworth was supposed to catch her and she went again and she went too high up on the stairs to jump and she fell and actually knocked her head and was very severely injured. At this time, Anne returns back to um, Upper Cross to where her sister Mary lives and just for a few days until they know Louise is okay and then she's sent to Bath to be with her family. In the meantime, her father um, has made friends with Another guy, the younger Mr. Elliot. Now he was a cousin or a nephew of some or something of the older Mr. Elliot, and is set to inherit. Um, no, that's not right. Yes, he is set to inherit the estate because he's the next male relative in line. But the two Mr. Elliots have been kind of fighting and haven't spoken to each other. But when Anne gets to Bath, all of a sudden these two Mr. Elliots are are having a good old time and being friends, and Mr. Elliot starts to pay more attention to Anne. And she's like, well, uh, but I'm in love with Captain Wentworth. I don't want to talk to you. Of course, she doesn't say that out loud because she doesn't want anyone to know that she's still in love with the captain. But anyway, we've got this guy going on. Pretty soon, who should show up to Bath but Captain Wentworth's sister and her husband, who we met earlier in the book, which I didn't tell you about, um, but they're lovely, delightful people. And guess who comes to visit them? Captain Wentworth. All right. Now, Lady Russell is still in the background of this story telling Anne, you need to marry someone rich, and she wants Anne to marry the younger Mr. Elliot. We find out about some things, some things about him that aren't so good. Now, up until this point, you can still read the book and not be spoiled by what happens here, but I'm going to caution you from this point forward, I am going to get into some spoilers. All right? So if you want to read this for yourself or you don't know, stop watching. Okay, spoilers, here we come. Now, we're in Bath. Captain Wentworth and Anne are still constantly seeing each other at different events, and they're traveling the same circle of friends as one another, and they just can't take it. And one day, they're in um, an apartment where um, Mary and Charles's family are staying in Bath, and Anne starts talking to Captain Wentworth's friend, and they're talking about how Mary thinks that women are more constant in their love, and and um, the friend, um, Harville, thinks that men are more constant in their love, and so they're having this debate. Captain Wentworth's at a desk writing a letter, and when the men get up to leave, he kind of makes it obvious that there's a note for her there, and I'm going to read some parts of the note. I won't read the whole thing, but you just have to hear this written. I want to say in his words, in Austin's words. This is what Captain Wentworth writes to Anne. I can listen no longer in silence. I must speak to you by such means or within my reach. You pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. Tell me not that I am too late, that such precious feelings are gone forever. I offer myself to you again with a heart even more your own than when you almost broke it eight and one half years ago. Dare not say that a man forgets sooner than a woman, that this love has an earlier death. I have loved none but you. Unjust I may have been. Weak and resentful I have been, but never inconstant. You alone have brought me to Bath, for you alone I think and plan. Have you not seen this? Can you fail to have understood my wishes? I'm going to skip a little bit here and then get to the very end. I must go, uncertain of my fate, but I shall return hither or follow your party as soon as possible. A word, a look, will be enough to decide whether I enter your father's house this evening or never. Oh my gosh. Okay, with a letter like that, who wouldn't be totally swooning, like knocked off their feet? 
Anne, of course, is affected by this letter. She's like rejoicing inside, but so scared to let anyone see what's going on because you just don't talk about personal matters in Regency society. It's not done. So what happens is as she's leaving to walk home, she sees the captain and all she has to do is look at him and he knows. And then he goes to her father's house and they set a date and they're married. As in all Austin books, we have a marriage at the end or engagement at least. And one can only presume that Anne and Wentworth go on to live happily ever after. In my favorite movie version of this, Amanda Root is playing Anne. And at the end, she and Captain Wentworth um, are on a ship. And she's like joining him as he's sailing off. Which is so romantic and happy. Yet at the same time, if you think about the historical time period, it's just after Napoleon had escaped from Elba and there's going to be another war. <laughs> so maybe they're not sailing off into the happiest of times. So one can only presume that they made through safely because if they were to get killed in the midst of... Uh, attacking Pol Napoleon or whatever, I, I would just be heartbroken. All right, so I've spent about 11 minutes kind of summarizing the book for you, and hopefully my little pictures didn't confuse you. Um, I want to just talk really briefly about why this book is my favorite of all time. First, if I was going to choose a favorite of all time, it had to be Jane Austen. I mean, Jane Austen and William Shakespeare are my two favorite writers. Shakespeare didn't write books. He wrote plays and poems. Austen, it's not just about the feels, you know? You definitely get the feels going between Anne and Captain Wentworth, and <sighs> that's that part's amazing and it's beautiful, but there's also the writing, and it's just brilliant. I mean, if you haven't read anything by Jane Austen, you really need to. Um, I don't know if I would start you off with Persuasion, though. Um, Northanger Abbey is the easiest to read, and I think it's the shortest. Um, Plus, it's got some fun, spooky, scary, haunted housey kind of feeling to it. But when you ch choose to read Persuasion, it's remember that Jane Austen's a high enough reading level that you've got to pay attention, but it's not so hard that you can't figure it out. If you're one of my middle school students watching this, you can figure out Jane Austen, and you can ask me for help if you need to. But you should also know that there are tons of adaptations and retellings of Austen's books out there as well. Um, including ones of persuasion. I would like to say specifically why out of Austin's books I chose persuasion as my favorite of all time. I think there's a sophistication to the writing that shows how much Austin has grown as an author. Not that her first writings weren't good. They were fantastic. She just had a gift. But I think this really shows how well thought out her plot structure is. She has beautiful description and dialogue, and that letter that I read to you is amazing. Um, I like it even better than Mr. Darcy's letter in Pride and Prejudice. Um, the hero of this book, Captain Wentworth, is a good man. And I don't think that good men get their due sometimes. He's a man that loved the same person for years and never forgot her, and... I'm not a man, so I don't know how their minds work, but you just don't hear about that kind of thing very much. Anyway, um, it's just a beautiful story, and, and I can so identify with her being someone who's very reserved and not into sharing their feelings too much until I started, you know, talking to people on YouTube, which has taken me years to be comfortable doing. Um, but I can see how she would feel trapped and I see how she would feel afraid and let herself be persuaded in the beginning because during that time period for a woman of her station if she didn't get married she might end up in a poor house or you know sick and dying somewhere because she wouldn't get to stay at her family home forever the younger Mr. Elliot was going to inherit it and he probably would have kicked her out um I just, I get her mindset. I understand why she's persuaded and why maybe she makes a couple of bad choices in the beginning um, of her life. But thankfully, due to the magic of Jane Austen and the magic of good plot structure, she's able to find her happy ending. So uh, I hope that you will read Persuasion and I hope that you'll enjoy many of Austen's books 
And if you're interested, there's even an international Jane Austen association called JASNA. And they have yearly conferences and their conferences in different states and all kinds of fun things. So if you totally become a Jane Austen nerd like me, there's lots of fun ways to celebrate your Austen nerdiness. Anyway, it's been a pleasure telling you about my favorite book of all time. Once again, Persuasion by the lovely Miss Jane Austen. And please read it. Thank you for listening. Adios.